Our worship team just released their album this Sunday night, this Sunday, and you know, that's one of the songs on, on the playlist. You want to download our music. It's amazing music. You're going to love it. Um, you're, the, the, even people that don't know about Jesus, let them hear it. There's some, it's just some good, great, you want to say great music. And I really believe that for the, you, you guys that are Christians, there's an anointing on this right now. And we got to make sure we're listening to that, playing it. And, 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 and we want to download the music because the more downloads we have, it's going to give us opportunities to go to radio stations and let them know people are listening. Check this out. So we're going to be doing that pretty soon as well. I'm so glad to see every one of you here today. Let's give the Lord one more praise. He's, he's worthy. He's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We've been really busy for the last few weeks, and we just, we've been doing Holy Wars last night. This place was full of people that are being discipled for Jesus Christ, and they're on fire for God. And the idea of our discipleship, it's, it's being trained to live a new lifestyle. We're not, we're not going through a set of classes and then come out and go back to the way we were living. We're going through these classes to end up with a new lifestyle. And this is what's happening. If you've not joined Holy Wars, you're going to get in the opportunity next month to start Holy Wars again. And, and, but also this weekend, we're going to have a God encounter. We're going to spend three, four hours in the presence of God. And this is going to be a time we're going to get prophetic words. We're going to hear from God. And you're going to be able to bask in his presence. There's something that happens in an extended period of time. If you're just in the presence of God for three or four hours, that doesn't happen in an hour period of time. How many understand? It's just totally something different. So we're going to be here Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. If you want to come, that'd be awesome. It's walk Everybody's welcome to come. If this is your first time here, I want to thank you for coming. And today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be praying for these gold cards today. And by the, I'm going to give everyone one more opportunity. If you've not got vision for your year, I'm going to give you an opportunity. You could get a card. One of, these, one of these cards here, there's a goal card, and just write two or three goals that you want to accomplish this year, vision from God, and write it down. I'm going to give, it to, I'll give you one more opportunity because I don't want anybody to miss out because I've learned this, if you aim for nothing, you hit it. It's really important if you're ever going to be successful in life, you're going to have to learn how to get a vision and get it on paper. Get a vision and get it on paper. We're starting a church in Compton this year. How I know, I got a vision, and we put it on paper. We, there's a lot of things that we're going to be doing this year, and, and it's not going to be an accident. This year, we're not going to hope it turns out great. We're making a decision. We know where we're headed. There's a bullseye, and we're going to hit it with God's help. I'm going to say, there's a bullseye, and we're going to hit it. There might be some contrary winds. We understand that. We'll just make the adjustments. We'll still hit the bullseye. There might be some resistance. How many understand starting something is one thing. Following through is a whole other thing. What God is developing in you with the resistance, thank God for the resistance because the resistance makes you stronger. The resistance is how you grow. Come on, you don't even get any muscles without any resistance. The Bible says when you're tr going through a trial and you're going through a tribulation, the Bible talks about this. When you're going through a tough time, it says count it joy. Knowing you know something, that the testing of your faith is going to produce endurance in you. And then, and then the scripture says, then you'll be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. What it means is at the end of your difficulty, at the end of your trial, if you push through and you don't give up, you're going to be better than you were from before the trial. You're going to be complete. Come on, you're going to be gone. You've gone through a process. This is not time to give up. This is a time to push through. Allow the process to develop you, mature you, and help you become the person you've always been created to be. How many understand that? Your trial is your friend. Now, what keeps you going? What keeps you going is the vision. What I mean by that is I might be going through a tough time right now. That's all right. I'm just walking through this valley, but I know 
I'm getting through this valley. Though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil because I'm just walking through. And then after the Bible says, walk right through that valley with the Lord, that's Psalms 23. And then he says, I prepare a table in front of your enemies. And what he was saying is, then my cup runs over. There's an overflow. And what God is saying, after your trial, there's going to be a party. And he goes, I'm going to set this all up that your enemies, their haters, come on, demons that were coming against you are going to have to see you. The greatest revenge that you could ever have against the enemy is your personal success. How many understand this trial is not meant to defeat you? This trial is meant to graduate you. Graduate! Everybody wants a testimony. But you got to go through the test to get a testimony. How many, are, uh, how many are expecting some great things in 2022? All right. How many are ready to go through some great trials in 2022? Because if you want great things, that means you're going to have to go through some great resistance to get great things. Because there's some things that the devil has and he's not going to let you get it without a fight. But you got to say, the spirit that's in me, come on, greater is he that's in me than whatever, come on, is coming against me. I've been prepared for this. I've been prepared for this. Devil, let's go. You have to have that, main, that mindset. How many, how many know you got to have a mindset? Not a defeated mindset. Not a victimization mindset. You got to have a victorious mindset. You got to know that this battle is already fixed. I already know I win. I, the Lord is with me. There's more for me than are against me. This is just a setup. Come on. This is just a setup for my next level. God knows what he's doing. I'm not alone. You're not alone. We're going to get this vision. And I want you to, that's why you write down the vision. You know what? You write down the vision. The vision doesn't change just because you're going through a tough time. There's a time in your life you're going through a difficulty and you got to say, well, I know why I'm going through this. Let's read this again. Oh, yeah, all right. This is worth it because I know where I'm headed. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't be a quitter. Don't be a quitter. Overcome. Be a winner. Amen. Make a t-shirt. Don't be a quitter. Be a winner. Right? Because either you're a quitter or you're a winner. But you can't be both at the same time. All right? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight. Those that maybe haven't even set goals tonight yet, that they'll get a card. They'll get a dream. They'll get a vision. They'll put it on paper. And that, that act of faith will be a partnership with you the impossible will all of a sudden be possible because we believe in you. I thank you, Lord. I come against all depression in the name of Jesus. I bind you, and whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Go, depression. Go, hopelessness. Go, anxiety. Go, fear. You're not welcome here in the name of Jesus. God's not given us a spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. We'll go ahead and take that. Soundness of mind, I declare it over everyone that's struggling mentally right now. Power right now. Anybody that feels weak right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So glad to see every one of you here tonight. And I want to talk to you about something. Uh, this is how life works. And, and this is a question I'm going to be asking you today. Have you decided what you want have you decided what you want out of life because if you don't decide someone will decide for you life is like a restaurant you sit down in a restaurant you look at a menu I did that today they had all kinds of stuff on that menu they had, I mean, they had burritos, they had salads, they had some rice and beans dishes, they had, they had soup and they had shrimp and all kinds of choices. 
They left me with a menu. Life is like a restaurant. The waiter comes back. He asked me, are you ready yet? And I knew what he meant. Are you ready to order? Because we got a cook in the back that could cook you anything that's on this menu. We got the food, but we're not going to start cooking till we got an order. So until you know what you want, the cook is unemployed. Until you decide what you want out of life, nothing's coming. Have you decided what you want? Now, what's so good about knowing what you want is this. Once you know what you want, you know also this, that when something shows up and it's not what you ordered, you send it back. There's some things that you need to send back, but you don't know yet because you've not decided what you want. Everything that's on the menu, everything that's on the, in the Word, God has said, I've given you promises. I've given you my power. I've given you my Holy Spirit. My promises are yes and amen. What he's saying, order. Someone say order. We only see, receive what we persistently ask for. If you want ice cream, you need to ask for ice cream. If you need breakthrough, you need to ask for a breakthrough. If you need joy, you need to ask for joy. And if you want some steak and lobster and it's on the menu, go ahead and order steak and lobster. Don't settle for grilled cheese. Some of us have a, a poverty mentality and you only order and you ask based on your present condition. You want steak and lobster, but you only order grilled cheese because that's what you think you could afford. And God is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. What he's saying is this. I have paid the price for everything on the menu. Why don't you start upsizing your orders? The only limit that we're going to have is our order. This is what I've learned. Complaining about what we don't want will not create a successful life. Some of us are great complainers, but you're not great at praying. Only when we have a clear vision of what we want can we do begin to succeed. If you don't know what you want out of a marriage and you don't know what you want out come out of a career and you don't know what you want out of a ministry and you don't know what you know what you want out of life, this is what's going to happen. You will fail. You're going to waste your life because you have no sense of direction. People with no sense of direction are self-destructive. If you don't have a vision for your marriage, any short skirt girl at work can tempt you to commit adultery because you have no vision where you're at. When you don't have vision for ministry, any little midget devil, puny devil, not a big one, can tempt you out of your purpose. Come on, tempt you out of your dream, tempt you out of your future, tempt you out of your destiny. The reason being, you don't know where you're headed, so every offer is tempting. Stop being desperate and be determined. I just, I feel lonely. I just want a man. I just want a woman. Is that it? Is that what you're ordering? You just want some food? Do you wonder why you don't, aren't satisfied? I'll tell you why you're not satisfied. You ain't ordering right. Yeah. 
You need to know what you're ordering this year. You need to know where you're going this year. You need, come on, you need to know this year. I already know where I'm planted. I already know what fruit's coming. I already know what goals are going to be hit. I already know what my future looks like. I wrote it down at the beginning of the year, and now I'm not accepting, come on, I'm not accepting something that's not that. Understand before the real comes, the counterfeit comes. And if you don't know what you want, you can marry a counterfeit. We only receive, come on, life's like a restaurant. You get what you order. And if you don't like what's on your plate, look yourself in the mirror. You're the one that's ordering. You're the one that's making the choices. If you want your hamburger without pickles, say something. Well, they should know. They shouldn't know. You should know. It's your life. It's your hamburger. Come on. It's your soup. It's your burrito. It's your marriage. It's your future. It's your ministry. God has given you the power to make some choices. Stop being a victim. It's your fault. And if you don't know what you want, any little drug dealer from the hood could just offer you a little weed and you're going for it because you don't know where you're headed. So you just live a life high because you don't know where you're headed. You're trying to escape reality because your reality has no clarity. People that get high get drunk. This is the reason. They don't like their reality. I'm not trying to escape my reality. I love my reality, and I need to be sober. Come on, to accomplish this reality. I got a great future. I can't do it drunk. I can't do it high. I can't do it with weed. I can't do it with marijuana. Come on, I can't do it with crack. I'm focused. So say focus. We only receive what we persistently ask for. In Matthew 7, 7, look what it says. Keep on asking. Keep on what? And you will receive what you... You'll receive what you... You'll receive what you... Have you ever been to a restaurant and they brought you the wrong meal? This is what I do. I go, that must be for another table. I didn't order that. I'm not trying to be mean. I know what I ordered. I'm paying for it. So I send it back. And then I ask again for what I ordered. You'll never accomplish great things if you give up when you start getting the wrong stuff coming to you. You got to not only ask, you got to keep on asking, keep on praying, keep on seeking, keep on knocking until you receive the very thing that you asked for. Stop giving up on your order. And this, this is the other thing. You don't need someone to give you a break. God's already giving you your break. Stop putting your faith in people and start putting your faith in your God. He said, ask me and I'll give it to you if you want it bad enough. What he's saying is stop giving up on your dream and act like you're really going for it. Because there's going to be some resistance. There's going to be, come on, there's going to be some opposition. And sometimes the thing that you want needs more faith than you're delivering. The resistance is building you to be able to get the dream and keep the dream. So goal setting, this is where I got goals here, is just ordering. What is goal setting? It's the process, goal setting is just a process of choosing. Someone say choosing. What do you want? Who you want to be, you're choosing who you want to be, what you want to accomplish, and where, you, where we want to go, and the steps it takes to get there. I'm going to read it again. Goal setting is the process, someone say process, of choosing who you want to be, 
what, what we want to accomplish and where we want to go and the steps it takes to get there. That's all goal setting is. All we're talking about, you have to be more calculated about your life than just guessing and hoping. Some people plan more for a wedding day than they plan for a marriage. Someone say, get a plan. Get a vision. I'm teaching you how to succeed in life. If you get, come on, if you master this spiritual skill, there's no limit of what you can do in the workplace. There's no limit of what you could do with a family. There's no limit of what you could do. Come on, you could do with a ministry. You need to start getting a vision, get a plan of action, and then work that thing. Ask, seek, knock until you see it become a reality. We're, we get depressed because we have no vision. We backslide because the past looks better than our future. Let me understand that. My future looks better than my past. I don't want nothing in my past. I was dumber in my past. Less experience in my past. More sinful in my past. More depressed in my past, fearful in my past, addicted in my past. Why would I want to go back to the thing God delivered me from? Stop allowing the devil to give you a vision of your past instead of giving you a vision of your future. It's you. You decide. The Word of God is full of faith. It's full of promises. It's full of ideas. It, wash yourself with the Word so your imagination grows. Okay, Le guys, you want to be a successful leader? Help people set goals. Help others succeed by setting goals and helping them track results. You want to be a successful parent? Help your kids set goals and help them track their results. You want to be successful in life? Set goals and check your results every day. Am I moving closer to the vision? It's getting quiet in here. Life is like a restaurant. You get what you order. Once you look at the menu and decided what you want, you still need to order. Knowing the menu and the promises of God are not enough. You need to order. And until we order, nothing's being cooked. Nothing's being sent. Angels aren't moving. Heaven is not moving until a man or a woman break a prayer and say, God, use me. I'm asking you now to reach Compton. Father, let's reach that city that's been held by demons for, for decades. Use me, Lord. Give me a vision for that city. I'm praying. I need your help. So does anybody have some vision? Come on, get some vision. Now, life is like a restaurant. So I'm going to ask and think big. I love, one of the things I love doing is going to all-you-can-eat places. I also love going on cruise ships. All you can eat, and you don't have to even leave a tip. They got chefs in the back cooking all day long. And you could eat all day long. If you want to eat all day long, they don't say, hey, sir, you know, you're overdoing it. No. If you're hungry on a cruise ship, you're dumb. There's food all around you. There's opportunity all around you. There's power all around you. There's blessing all around you. There's help all around you. Come on, God's spirit is all around you. Come on, if you're lacking, if you're scared, if you're anxious, it's time to stop worrying and it's time to start ordering.
I'm excited. The other day, this is crazy. Montel Jordan, remember that guy came here and did the, did the conference? Well, he saw my shoes and he really liked them. So what I did, I gave him my favorite shoe. He liked them and I packed them up, cleaned them up, and I gave it to him. Like I can't even find that shoe. I just can't find it. He calls me the other day. He goes, Pastor Marco, uh, those shoes that you gave me, I get compliments all over the world. I went to the Raider game the other day, sang the national anthem. Look, and he showed me a picture with his or my shoes. So, and then this week, he has the audacity <laughs> to tell me, man, I keep getting more compliments on the shoes. I go, all right. He goes, where'd you get those shoes at? I didn't know. Someone gave them to me. <laughs> I go, I don't know, but I'll talk to my shoe guy, see if I can find them. So, so now what, what, he, what, I, what I did was I, I called them like three or four hours later and say, I haven't talked to my shoe guy yet. He goes, don't worry about it. I found them on a website called thegoat.com. I go, really? I never heard of that website. So I went on thegoat.com and I was on there for three hours. I was supposed to be on there. I'm a holy warrior. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of nice shoes in there. I started looking for my credit card. <laughs> I found a shoe I really like and I ordered it. So I ordered it. As soon as I ordered it, I'm just waiting for a package. I'm excited because I already know the package is coming. I'm not worried about the package. I know what I ordered. I know what shoe's coming, so I'm excited. Come on, I'm not depressed about my shoes. I got something that's coming in the mail. Why are you depressed? Have you ordered? Come on, have you ordered from God? Come on, Amazon is delivering on time, but God is way better than Amazon because when you ask them, you receive what you ask for. It's time to get excited. I know you don't have it in your hand, but you ordered it. Someone just got delivered from the depression. Oh man, I've been all depressed because I've been receiving the orders from the devil over my life instead of ordering myself. Because if you don't order, the devil will order for you. So if you're going to order, ask big What does it cost you to ask big? Oh, you know, that request right there, you know, that's a big request. That costs you at least $4,000. The request already been paid for. Uh, Jesus says it's finished. I already paid the full bill. I paid for the forgiveness. I paid for the freedom. I paid for the joy. I paid for the peace. Come on, I paid for the victory. I paid for the resurrection. I paid for every, come on, every promise. Everything has been paid for. The only problem, you're not asking. This is a story about a couple that it was an elderly couple that want, they're very poor and elderly, but they put their name in a raffle at some senior complex, and they won a trip on a cruise ship. They've never been on a cruise ship their whole lives. When they walked on that cruise ship, they thought it was heaven on earth. They were talking to each other and saying, this is heaven. It's so beautiful. Then they showed them 
their quarters where they were going to stay. And they were on the upper levels in a beautiful suite. When they walked into that place, they said, this is heaven. That's the only way we could describe it. They looked out their window, had a balcony, and now they were looking over into the ocean. This is the first time they ever saw an ocean. This is the first time they ever were in a room with so, so that, that was so plush they couldn't believe it. What they did, after that they got hungry and they opened up her purse and they had a little crackers and jelly. They laid down a little blanket. They sat down and they were saying, this is heaven. Uh, crackers and jelly. They had a nine day cruise. They stayed in their room the whole time with crackers and jelly. And they were saying, man, this is awesome. The room is so beautiful. We could look at the ocean. We got a balcony and we got our crackers and jelly and cheese. The cruise ship started getting concerned with them because they didn't see them walk out of their room the whole time. So they knocked on their door because they maybe thought maybe they died, something happened. On the ninth day, they knock on their door. Mr. Miss, are you guys okay? And they said, and they opened the door, said, yes, we are. We're doing great. This has been, we're so grateful. We're so thankful. He goes, I know, but I was a little concerned. You guys never left your room. And they said, well, we had a great time in here. I go, but what have you been eating? He goes, well, we brought our crackers and cheese and jelly, and we've been having a good old time. And he saw the crackers, the crumbs, and he saw the, the, little, the, the little blanket they put on the floor. And he said, but we never saw you go out to breakfast or dinner. And they said, oh, no, we couldn't afford that. We were just fine in this room. He goes, but you never went out to, to enjoy the ship. He goes, oh, no, we couldn't afford anything. He goes, let me see your ticket. And he looked at their ticket, and they had first-class tickets that covered every single thing on that ship. The problem was they didn't know. You got first-class tickets. It's been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And you're settling for some crackers and cheese. And God is saying, it's time to get out of your limited thinking. Get out of that room. And it's time to walk with faith in this life. And God is saying, the only limit that you have is your limited thinking. We're going to break that in the name of Jesus tonight. So now. If you're going to ask, that's big. Dreams don't cost anything. We covered this in our P12 today. Dreams don't cost you anything, but a lack of dreams will cost you everything. There's a quote I read. Big things are built by big thinkers. Another quote. Think little goals, expect little achievements. Think big goals and win big success. The truth is, anything's possible for someone who believes. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter where, where you're born. It doesn't matter the background you have. It doesn't matter who's opposing you. God, God is saying, just believe in me. I'm a God that created the heavens and the earth. I make things out of nothing. You're more than nothing. You're something. If I can make this whole universe out of nothing, what makes you think I can do something magnificent with something that I created? You're my masterpiece created to do some big things. God is saying it's time to get some bigger thinking. 
We're going to end with this scripture. I didn't even get to the other part yet. I'm going to have to save that for another Wednesday. Because what I want to talk to you guys, not today, but next time, I want to talk about what stops people from setting goals and asking big. I want to know why. why? What stops people? Do you understand that only 3% of hum, human beings set goals? They actually write down a vision of their future. 97% of people wish, they dream, but they never put anything on paper. And that's why they get lost easily in life. Because they don't know where they are going. I know where I'm going. Me and my wife, until death do we part. I say, Pastor, do any girls come up, you know, and they, do you know, they, they try to throw themselves at you? No. You know why they don't? Because they know I know where I'm going. Come on, demons, no demons. Flirts, no flirts. If you're getting tempted all over the place, it's because you got lust in you. Pastor, does anybody offer you drugs? No, because I don't, I, I don't have the temptation for drugs. If they're always offering you drugs, it's because it's in you. Your lust is chasing after you. You're attracting it into your life. I'm not attracting girls into my life. I'm not attracting adultery into my life. I'm attracting breakthrough into my life. I'm attracting greatness into my life. I'm attracting, come on, ministry into my life. I'm attracting freedom into my life. I'm attracting the Holy Spirit into my life. That's what I'm attracting into my life because that's where I'm headed. I'm clear about my future. I don't know. It just seems like guys just keep throwing themselves at me. I don't know why. I don't know why. You got lust in you. You look easy. You look desperate. They could read it off of you. It's getting quiet up in here. Come on, you better get some confidence of who you are. I'm a woman of God. I don't sell myself cheap. Come on, for you to even qualify to talk to me, you're going to have to go through, come on, you're going to have to go through the process because I already know what I want. I know what I ordered, and it sounds like you're not it, so I'm not wasting time talking to you. Well, but, but pastor, he might, that might be the one. It's, you know it's not the one. Stop talking to yourself that he's the one. You know he's not the one because you don't even bring him around. Anybody will tell you different. You only show them the people that are in the same mess like you. Lord Jesus. Someone saying, why did I come here on this Wednesday night? I don't even know what's going on. He turned my world upside down. Yeah, we're going to turn your world upside down. I'm tired of peace. Come on. I'm tired of the devil defeating you. I'm tired of the devil, de come on, depressing you. I'm tired of you walking in fear. I'm tired of you looking around and you don't see nothing. It's time for you to get some vision from God. God saved you. Come on. And he made you new to do some great works. You're God's workmanship created to do some great things. You better know who you are. You better know who your God is. There's no limit. Come on. For those that believe. People should want to follow you because you know where you're going. Ask and think big. We'll end it with the scripture right here. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Jesus says this. Listen to me. Listen. Listen to me. That's what Jesus said. Escuchame. Oiga, hear me. And he says it with exclamation points. Listen to me. Hard head. You 
can pray for anything. You can order anything on the menu. Listen to me. You know why he said listen to me? Because I've been saying this over and over, and you're worried, and you're depressed, and you're suicidal. Listen to me. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to your haters. Stop listening to the negativity. Stop listening to the news. Listen to me. It don't matter if this world's going to hell in a handbasket. You're not. I have plans for good and not evil. Hope and a future. Come on. I got plans. Above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. I'm taking you somewhere. I didn't die to leave you in a mess. I died to take you out of it. You can pray for anything. And if you believe that you ordered those Jordans, you will have it. It's yours. Well, today, a box came. Lisa said, what's in that box? I go, none of your business. <laughs> This is between me and goat.com. <laughs> but I know what I order. So when I open it up, what I order, I'm going to bring, I'll wear one of these days. I ordered some high top Jordans, Laker edition. And it says Lakers on the back. Yellow, man, that thing's all tight. So I didn't even need to open the box to know what was in the box because I already know what I ordered. You don't need to come on. You don't care how it's wrapped up. It wasn't wrapped up and real pretty. It was all brown and look all, it looked like just some generic thing. But it wasn't no generic thing. It's exactly what I ordered. And once you know what you ordered, and once you believe that you received it when you ordered it, you don't need to worry about how it's packaged. You don't need to worry if it's a windy day, it's a hot day, it's a cold day, it's already ordered, it's already paid for, it's in the mail. And when you come on and you don't give up, you're excited. People say, why are you smiling? And things are hard right now because I already know what I ordered from God and I received it when I ordered it. I believed it when I ordered it. So right now there's an expectation with me, within me. There's hope driving in me. I know what's coming in the mail. I know what I ordered from God and God's not a man that he should lie. When you order something, he's the real man. He, we call him real mail man. He delivers exactly what's yours. Give God some praise. Listen to me. You can pray for anything. And if you believe you have it, it's yours. You got to learn how to pray in faith. Not pray in worry. Well, I hope, I hope God heard me. I hope I prayed right. I don't know. Did I say Jesus' name or not? I don't know. That's the devil. All you have to say, help. God understands it. I got a little grandson. He don't even know how to talk. He just goes, uh. I know exactly what he wants. God knows exactly. You don't have to have all kinds of developed spiritual. Thou art the most holy, righteous king in the universe. Thou art the art. What you say, God said, like, what you said, that didn't even make sense. I, uh, <laughs> you wonder why you don't receive that. Because when you pray, you start changing your voice into some superhuman being that's smart. And you ain't that smart. You just got to say, God, I need your hell. Right now, I'm messed up. And God says, 
perfect. Now let's, come on, let's help you. Let's, come on, let's send the job your way. Let's send the breakthrough your way. Come on, let's send the deliverance your way. Let's send all the help your way. I was just waiting. Come on, the chef was unemployed. Now we can go to work and make you the meal you ordered. Give God just one more praise. Awesome. We're going to pray real fast. Guys, help me with this. Matter of fact, let's get this table up here. That thing weighs around 400 pounds. Don't worry about it. I've been working out. I know you're amazed. Like, how did he do that? Don't worry about that. Just, you know, when you start serving the Lord, you'll be strong like that too. <laughs> there we go. You know, I'm telling you, Pastor Robert, everyone, come on, pastors, come up here. All the pastors, come up here. Okay, there we go. I'm telling you. know what we're going to do? We're going to put our faith on that. We're going to put our blessing on that. We're going to put our experience on that. We're gonna, come on. We're going to, come on. We're gonna, if right now you need a goal, I mean, you still want to turn a goal card, put it up here. We're going to pray for it right now. Breakthrough's going to be on it. Come on. These are the five loaves and two fish. Then we're going to send it back to you with some multiplication. And everything that's written here is your, part of your order. And it's going to come to pass. The only orders that will not be, come on, sent out to your table is the one you didn't order. What a shame you're in a restaurant still hungry because you refuse to order. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Stop looking. Stop, stop walking out of the restaurant. Ah, they don't even food. They don't even get food here. No, you don't order here. I, I, I think I need to go another church. I ain't being fed. No, you ain't ordering nothing. Y'all mad at the chef and you didn't order nothing? Give me a break. Praise the Lord. There we go. Come on. This is all kind of altar call we need right there. Some vision. Come on. We need some vision calls. Some vision calls. You're never going to see your family. God bless you, baby. You're never going to see your family saved until you start writing down my family. We're all going to get saved. Everybody's going to get saved. Hold on. Hold on. I got a go card on there. Get that go card that's on there. We're going to fill this place. Come on, let's go fill this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. That's a pastor right there. Come on, he's coming here. Come on, he's coming here. And God sent him here because God's going to give him. Come on, God's giving him some big vision. God said you ordered it. I'm giving it to you. Give God some praise. Come on, there's some ordering happening here. Heaven's ready to go to work. You know, the other day someone had a vision that there's 10,000 angels hanging around the church. And I just wonder, are there 10,000 angels unemployed? Because no one asking for nothing. Like, I wish someone would at least pray around here. <laughs> Hallelujah, okay. Hallelujah, come on. You acted in faith. We're going to, Father, we're going to pray in faith right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to lay hands on this. Come on, let's stand up. Let's say, you just you put your hands out here. Robert, Pastor Robert, let's go ahead and pray. And then I'm going to touch all, I'm going to put all anointing all over this. Stretch your hands forward right now to all these goals. Lord, we thank you right now. We lay hands on these goals, Lord. Your word says, Lord, to write it down. Write it plainly on tablets. Write it plainly on paper. And you will bring people to run with it. Anything we ask in your name, in the name of Jesus, it will be done. We bind every hindrance in the name of Jesus. We ask you, warn angels right now, angels that are there to fight for us on our behalf to get our prayers answered. All the angels in the heavenly realms right now in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on all these cards. We lay hands on all these goals. We lay hands on this vision, Father. It will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let them be answered one by one. We thank you, God. You see what's on this table, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. We thank you. They will be answered in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. Let it be done in the name of Jesus. Everything has been written down, God. Let it come 
to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Every prophetic word that's on here, let it be established in the name of Jesus. Businesses are started. Kids are coming back to, to home. Husband and wives, restoration for families, God. Healing will take place, Lord. We thank you for finances, Lord. Overflowing finances, God. Salvations in the name of Jesus. We thank you for breakthroughs, Lord. Restoration between marriages. We thank you, Lord. Every demonic influence is broken right now in the name of Jesus. We cover all these gold cards with the blood of Jesus. We seal these prayers with the blood of Jesus Christ. We seal these prayers with the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. It is done. It will be accomplished, says the Lord. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Go before us, Lord. Go before us with these dreams and visions. It will be done. When we stand in agreement, it is done. All of us are standing in agreement as leaders, as pastors, as elders of the church. It will be done in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a shout of praise. When you start feeling that old spirit trying to come on you, read the vision. Come on, read the dream. Read the promise. Hold on to it. Come on, you gotta learn how to hold on to stuff. Get back into the word. Build your faith. Come on, she's bringing hers right here. Come on, people are still bringing it. Come on, let's give God some praise. Awesome. Pastor Robert, close us out now. What we're going to do now, we're going to do right now, we're going to let these things ferment at the altar right here. Just get, just be, just right here. We're going to put a guard on these things. They're going to be here at the altar right here. Next week, we're sending back your goals back to you. The only difference we just prayed over them. Come on, there's years of experience, years of anointing. Come on, years of wisdom right now on your th There's a blessing. You're gonna have more faith because wherever two agree on earth, it shall be done. And there's more than two of us here. Now, what I need you to do, you keep asking, you keep knocking, you keep showing. How I know you gave up is you stop coming to church because once your praise is gone your vision has gone keep coming to church bring some people to the house of God get some vision that you're no longer to come alone God's ready to do some great things in your life your neighbor's gonna change your work work is gonna change God's gonna start using you some of you you wrote down some things but you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to upsize it. Like, I, oh, I, I wasn't thinking big enough. I need to bring me that, that car. Give me the back to me. Don't worry about it. Just rewrite it in your own book. Come on, just rewrite it. God understands you. You can upgrade it yourself. I'm stuck with that one. I had so I now I want to do bigger. No, God says, right, write bigger. You could. God says, okay, it's same anointing. Just rewrite it. Go to the next level. Amen. How many are excited about God this weekend? Saturday, God Encounter. Pastor Robert, close us out, please. We're going to get ready to close this service here in a few minutes. God Encounter, Saturday at 9 o'clock. Men's and Women's Unity Night, this Friday, 7 o'clock. All the men, all the women, come join us this Friday at 7 o'clock. Before we leave today, we're going to open up our front section here in a moment for prayer. If there's anything you are facing right now, that you need prayer for we want to pray with you if it's restoration with your family 
If it's a loved one, maybe that's sick. Maybe you're sick right now. You need a healing in your body. You want God to touch your body. We want to pray with you. Maybe it's about a job. Maybe it's a decision you have to make soon. You need some wisdom. You need some guidance. We would love to pray with you. But the last thing before we leave today, we want to make sure that everyone here is on their way to heaven. We want to make sure here tonight, we want to make sure here tonight, if you were to die tonight, you'd go straight to heaven. So pastor, how do I get there? What are you talking about? It's really simple. All you got to do is put your faith in Jesus. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, pastor, I would love to be forgiven of all my sins. I need to get right with God. Maybe, maybe you've been running from God. You say, man, I just want a fresh start today. I want to come back to God. I'm going to ask you to slip your hands up. But this is the biggest question of all. If you were to die tonight, if you were to die tonight, where will you spend eternity? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life? Do you want to be forgiven of all your sins? You say, yeah, that's me. I need to be forgiven of my sins. Yeah, I need to start my, my walk with Christ. Yes, I need Jesus. Yes, I want to make sure if I die today, I'm going straight to heaven. I need God. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up when I count to three. One. Maybe your heart's beating a little fast right now. Your hands are going to get sweaty. Jesus is talking to you. Don't leave this property. Don't leave this campus without giving your life to Jesus. If you want God, you want to be forgiven of all your sins. You want to become a disciple of Jesus. You want to come back to God today. When I count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Right now, raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see a hand there. I see a hand there. I think I see a hand over there. Hand there, hand there, hand there. I see a hand there. I see a hand there. Yeah. I want to give my life to God. I want to come back to God. I want Jesus to forgive me my sins. I see the hand. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come forward. Come meet me down here, and we're going to lead you today in a prayer, in a prayer to receive Jesus, a prayer to be forgiven of all of our sins. Come on down. Even if you didn't raise your hands, you said, I want God. I need to be forgiven. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I need a new start. Come, come, come. Yes, come, come. I need prayer. Come. You need prayer. You need a breakthrough. You need a miracle. Come. You need God to touch you. Come. You need to be healed in your body. Come. You need to be set free. Come. This is your night. Come. You need restoration with your family. Come. You need God to touch your husband. Come. You need God to touch your wife. This is your day. Come, come. This is your day. Come, come. Yeah. Come, come, come. This is your day. You need prayer? Come. You need a miracle? Come to the front. You need to be set free from an addiction? Run to the front. We got 20 more seconds. Come. You need to rededicate your life to God? Come. You got a family member that you brought tonight. Talk to them. You say, man, this is the reason why I brought you. I want you to receive Jesus as Savior. If you brought somebody, take 10 seconds. Talk to them. Yes, 10 more seconds. There you go. Three more people coming down. Four more people. Come, come, come. This is your day. This is your day. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of miracle. There you go, come. Now the three or four are coming down. Come, come. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, we're waiting for you. Come. Come on, church. The whole family's coming down. Now the one, two, three, four, five. Come, come. Yes. Come, squeeze in, squeeze in. Squeeze in, squeeze in. Come on. Man, this is awesome. You got two more, Mark? You got two more coming? Yeah, bring them, Mark. Come on, bring them. Come on, church. Give a round of applause. Another two coming up. Come. Awesome. Man, this is great. All right, here it goes, you guys. 
Everybody that came forward, I'm going to say a prayer. You're going to repeat after me this prayer. For the ones that came up to, to receive Jesus, you're going to become born again. The Holy Spirit's going to take over your life. Jesus now is going to take over your life. Some of you guys came for a breakthrough, maybe healing in your body. Our, our altar workers, our prayer partners here, we're going to pray with you. But every head bow, every eyes close. And I don't want to forget about those watching online right now. You're watching online. Take advantage of this moment. You're at home, you're at your workplace, you're driving, you're in a hospital, you're in another state, wherever you are. If you want Jesus as your Savior, join with us in this prayer. Maybe you're watching us online and maybe you can't be here. You need a physical healing. Put your hand right now on your body if you need a physical healing. And ask Jesus to heal you. Everything we ask in his name, he'll do it. His will is for you to be healed. His will is for you to be well without pain and suffering. Go ahead, put your hand right there. There you go, God's touching you. God's speaking to someone right now online. There you go. Just put your hand right there. God is touching you. Every head bow, every eyes close. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me. And Jesus, I ask you tonight, set me free from all bad habits, all addictions, Jesus, I give you everything. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you are saved. If you just said that prayer, you are saved now. Prayer partners, we need a few more seconds here at the altar. Your next 